Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about why alt.net developers absolutely hate new.net. Not all of them, but many of them. And this blog post on your screen right now is a great example for that. Now this blog post written by Rich Lander is just talking about the convenience of using .NET and how many APIs we have, yada, 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 how easy it is to work with things like UTF-8 JSON, JSON strings in general, and so on. But when you go to the comments, that's where everything implodes. And in this video, we're going to take a look at those comments and see the criticism that many people that still use .NET Framework have for modern .NET, that is .NET Core and then .NET 5 Plus. Like with any of my videos that are more conversational in nature, I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. So as I'm going through the blog, if you have something to say, please leave a comment. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. Now, quick announcement before I move on, we just launched a brand new course on DomeTrain called Getting Started with Clean Architecture in .NET. And that course is authored by the excellent educator Amikai Mandenban. You probably know him from YouTube. Link in the description if you don't already. Now, Amikai works for Microsoft and he works on technology that powers tools like PowerPoint and Office in general, as well as Teams. So you know his code is used by millions or hundreds of millions of of people every year and after all the research he did when he made this course he said and to quote him this is the best clean architecture course you're going to find out there for dotnet now to celebrate the launch i'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20 percent discount code so check the link in the description and use the code you see on your screen right now at checkout to claim the 20 percent discount and two more things there will be a deep dive course coming on clean architecture so if you buy this course you're going to get a special discount code for the deep dive as well as long as you subscribe to our mail list so go on dom train scroll all the way to the bottom and put your email down we're going to cross check everything and we're going to send you a code and if you also want to get started with ddd which can be paired with clean architecture during checkout you can add that course as well for a discounted price too all right enough with that now back to the video okay so let's take a look at this blog real quick now microsoft is writing in their official blog posts things to basically promote .NET, how fast it is, how cool it is, how many teams in Microsoft and maybe outside are using it, and so on. Now, that's part of their effort to desperately promote .NET to more people because it still has a negative connotation and it's perceived as a legacy old thing for, I don't know, Windows that is not cross-platform and so on still for many developers now we do know this is not the case and if you're watching my channel for years you would know that but many people don't and microsoft thinks that's the way to promote it i don't think that's the way to promote it i think that when other people talk about your product that's when you know it is good so me talking about .NET is more important than microsoft talking about .NET. so give me money and i'll talk about you microsoft but what i want to take a look at is if i go all the way down to the comments you're gonna see some very interesting ones for example this one over here by mystery man the comment goes as with respect i think now is not the time to talk about convenience and control when .NET has a last mile problem and then some bold claims as nobody has adopted .NET 5 or later, which is just not true and you can't know that. Not even Microsoft Windows team. The only products written in modern .NET are PowerShell, PowerToys and Paint.NET. That's it. Well, I know for a fact this is not true. Now, I speak with a lot of Microsoft employees and I know for a fact that Bing, for example, has been using preview versions of .NET 8. So to say that nobody is using it even in Microsoft is just insane to say. Plus... For any of the companies I've worked for the past five years, we've been using modern.net. In fact, my experience is exclusive on .NET Core Plus. And that is not in small companies either. We're talking large e-commerce platforms and large financial institutions. Now, Rich didn't really handle this well, in my opinion. And to go and say, oh, I got some exciting reading for you then. It's like, here, developer stories and the Windows Store team is using RC1. That's not how you convince these people. In fact, you probably shouldn't reply to these people because the more you reply, the more attention they get and the more they want to talk about it. But comments like this just will not help. Now, the reply from Greg is very interesting because it really surfaces the real problem that older .NET developers have, and that is, I'm concerned with the pace of .NET and it's very hard for me to keep up with LTS. In case you don't know, .NET is releasing one version per year. Every evenly version number, so uh, 6, 8, 
10 and so on is an LTS version and that is supported for three years and every odd version, so 5, 7, 9 and so on, those are considered STS and they only supported officially for 18 months. As you can see, there's a six month overlap between the STS and the LTS and obviously LTS is three years, so it gives you some time to also migrate. Now in the world of modern .NET development and especially with how infrequent breaking changes are right now, this is actually very manageable. I've done it because I was in .NET Core 1.0, then 1.1, then 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, 3.0, 3.1, and so on and so forth, all the way to 8. And the first versions had some issues with migration because there were more fundamental changes happening as .NET Core was trying to find what it wants to be. But from 5+, the changes are basically a one hour work max. So to say you're struggling to keep up with migrations, I don't really see that. And then here's the sort of the bombshell, which is donor framework wasn't like this. Thankfully, LTS for .NET 4.6 has been very long and we don't need to migrate. But there are some points about challenges of migrating big apps, especially bigger donor framework apps in .NET. Now, Microsoft has provided some documentation and tooling but I will agree, it is not always very, very easy to go from .NET Framework to .NET Core and .NET. And then Pilot tries to drive the whole Microsoft is not using modern .NET point home by saying that not all Teams, Visual Studio Dynamics and so on uh, use modern .NET. Now, I have to say, not everything has to use the new Microsoft thing within Microsoft to make it good for your application. In fact, I'm advocating for .NET, but my platform, Dome Train, is not using .NET at all currently. This is not a choice because I hate .NET. It's a choice because I'm being pragmatic with the tech choices I want to make for my business. That doesn't make .NET bad. It just makes me smarter with my choices. If there is value to do a migration like this in all of these products, then I'm sure Microsoft would do it. But when it doesn't make sense, why would they? And this is the same with people that are still stuck in donor framework, because I think the frustration is that they got really well in that old thing, donor framework, and then Microsoft says, that thing, it sucks, we're going to put it in the freezer, we're going to keep using it, but the new thing that gets all of the attention is modern.NET and .NET Core, and everything will focus there, and you won't hear anything again for donor framework. So as a developer, you go from this thing that you've been very good about, you built a career on, you can very easily get a job, everywhere and all that now becomes kind of undesired and obsolete and people don't really like it like if i go into a room of dozen developers and i say i use donor framework they'll be like oh i'm so sorry you're using donor framework i hope one day you can go to dotnet core and it does make sense because microsoft is treating dotnet core as this new amazing thing that everyone should be using and you never hear about how fast, for example, framework is, because it isn't. Now, funny to me is this comment over here that says that I was drawn to .NET Core 5, which is .NET 5 actually, uh, because there seem to be plans of some kind of compatibility between Java and JVM. Why would you need that? I don't know. Nothing in that direction three versions later. Yeah, Freeman, don't hold your breath on this one. Maui is a disaster. <laughs> I kind of agree. It has been handled very, very poorly. WPF is still good, all WPF, very true. And then I work on banks and stock exchanges. No one of my clients is using currently .NET. And then the comment finishes with a very important point, which is you guys have a big problem of selling .NET. Now, the last comment I want to focus on is that here's an enthusiastic .NET developer since .NET 1.1. And although they've adopted .NET Core 5+, they must admit that to them it falls short of what Microsoft achieved with the old dollar framework back in the day. I think that this is just nostalgia and rose-tinted glasses because I'm going to be honest, .NET, modern .NET, is months ahead of a lot of its competition. The biggest problem it has is that it's called .NET and it's made by Microsoft. If .NET was not called .NET, and was made by a different company with better reputation in the developer ecosystem, nobody would be like, I don't want to use that. In fact, if .NET 8 launched as a completely new product without nobody known behind it, the same way that BUN launched, many people will be jumping on the bandwagon. The problem it has is it's not cool. c -sharp is an amazing language, .NET is an amazing framework. This is a long comment, but I think that, yes, this comment over here strikes true, which is, Hey, now please don't judge me by taking this as a nostalgic trip down memory lane, but it really is because 
if in 20 years I am not catching up with latest.net all the time and my knowledge isn't adapted and grows as the framework below me grows, then I will feel frustrated and I will feel stuck. I don't want to go much deeper with this because you get the point. Many people, especially those very passionate about Dora framework, mainly because they didn't want to move or couldn't move to latest.net, really really hate new.net now i will put a link of this blog in the description down below hopefully the comments do not get deleted but i would really 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 like to know your thoughts about all this how do you think microsoft has handled the drone framework and then net both migration but also the both platforms living next to each other and one being this poster child and the other one being the thing you hide in the basement well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding